So, some time ago, I came across a video on Facebook. I'm gonna play this clip for you now. But I'm gonna warn you, it gets weird really fast, and I decided to play this version of it for a very specific reason. It's a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Watch this now, because you say, I know what happens. They all got the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues. No, 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 you're jumping ahead of the story. The building matters. The volume of the building's square footage determines the anointing that can be held. Because here's what it said. There came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and filled the house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them cloven tongues like fire and sat upon each of them. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing that was baptized in the Holy Ghost was the building, the room. So if you want a lot of anointing and an increase for the city, then put us somewhere with a higher ceiling and bigger walls because God's Holy Spirit wants to fill a bigger room. Nope, 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 nope. Run. You know, I keep thinking to myself that I'm not going to be surprised by some of these things because I've seen crazy, ridiculous twisting of scripture, but this one got me. Now I have watched where this clip is from in its entirety. So what we're about to go into isn't based off of just this one minute clip. So let's break down his argument. Basically he is stating that at Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came down upon the apostles and baptized them with tongues of fire, the building itself was the first thing that was baptized. That then leads him on to say that if buildings are baptized or if buildings are filled by the Holy Spirit, the bigger the building, the more spirit that can be in there. Makes sense, right? No. No, 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 no. Not at all. None of it makes sense. And honestly, I don't even know where he got this idea to begin with. So we are going to go to Acts chapter 2 and break this down in the context of scripture. We're just going to start by reading the four verses. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the progression of this narrative is pretty straightforward. They're all together in one house on the day of Pentecost. Then there was this loud sound like a rushing wind. It filled the house. Tongues of fire came down upon them and filled them with the Holy Spirit. Then they began to speak in tongues. It's this middle part that is in question. That being, it filled the house. Now this is where his argument comes from. I believe that he is taking the phrase, it filled the entire house, to mean the spirit filled the entire house, meaning that the house was baptized by the Holy Spirit before the disciples were. If that makes sense from his argument point, not from his theology point. Here's the big problem with this, and here's where his whole entire argument breaks apart. We need to ask the question, what is the antecedent of the word it? That was a fancy way of saying, what is it referring to? A general rule of thumb when reading the Bible and you see the word it is generally referring to one of the closest nouns right before it. In this case, the sound like a mighty rushing wind. Now it is actually impossible to move the antecedent, what it is, forward into verse 3. Reason being, Luke is setting forth a timeline. They were there, rushing wind, it filled the house, tongues of fire came down, filled by the Spirit, spoke in tongues. One, two, three, four, five. They're in progression of each other. It makes no sense to take number three and try to explain it with number four since it hasn't happened yet. So it'd be foolish of Luke to write it referring to something that's going to happen. If that were the case, he would have said, and divided tongues of fire filled the house and they rested upon them. But he doesn't do that because the it is referring back to this great noise that they heard. This great sound filled the house, not the Holy Spirit indwelt the house. 
So what this guy is saying is completely wrong and is very much a twisting of scripture. His whole point in bringing this up is that they need to get a bigger building so that the Holy Spirit can indwell that building so that they can bring more people into that building to be indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Because apparently what it sounds like is in order to be indwelled by the Holy Spirit, you need to go into a building that is indwelt by the Holy Spirit, which makes absolutely no sense. All you'd have to do is go to an example in the New Testament where somebody was filled with the Holy Spirit outside of a building. I bet he didn't think of that one. This is why we need to spend time studying the word, what it actually says, and not taking a passage and twisting it to say something that it doesn't actually mean. I've said this before, but the best rule of thumb when reading the Bible is to take it at face value. Another good rule of thumb is Occam's razor. This is basically that when you have two explanations, the simplest one is generally the right one. When applying this to the Bible, if you were to read read that passage, the simple face value thing that the text is stating is that the sound filled the house. That is the natural reading of the text. You shouldn't have to twist things around to make it fit. And yes, the Bible is very complex. We can dive deep and deep and deep and deep into it and still never get anywhere into it because it's depth is so great. But at the same time, do not search for depth in a narrative by twisting it when there isn't that depth. Yes, that passage has a lot of depth. We could go into Joel's prophecy that lines up with it. That is depth that the Bible has shown us. But to take a passage and twist it to say something that isn't there is creating false depth. And that doesn't glorify God. There are too many people who are trying to sound profound by coming up with some new idea from scripture. But don't buy it, because most times they're just twisting it for their own purposes. So remember to study the word, to know proper doctrine, and to always check the context of the passage. Be like the noble Bereans and examine the scriptures to see if what somebody is saying is true. Subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and check out one of our other videos. But until next time, remember to know the word, do the word, and share the word in its proper context, as the word says. But remember, we always do it in love.